The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. You are watching number 12 from Chem 2045, Fall 2009, Exam 1. Number 12 says to us, a 0.440 gram sample of butyric acid, which contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, is combusted in excess oxygen, yielding 0.882 grams CO2 and 0.360 grams H2O. What is the empirical formula for the butyric acid, the acid in butter? Okay. In order to uh, find the empirical formula, we need to construct. Uh, we need to we need to see what's happening. So let's take butyric acid. We don't know the molecular formula right now. All we know is that it consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, right? But we don't know in what ratios. So let's just call it X, Y, and alpha. Oh yeah, psych you out. And then we'll react it in with oxygen because we're combusting the butyric acid. Then this will yield CO two and H two O because it tells us, and it gives us the masses. But we don't know what coefficients we can put in because we don't know the molecular formula of the butyric acid. So we have to approach it a different way. We have to use the product how much of the product we got in order to think backwards. Here's the idea. When we blew up butyric acid, we got car some carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide contains all of the carbon that the butyric acid originally had. Because none of, none of the carbon that butyric acid originally had went into anything else. There's no carbon found in water. So all the carbon went straight to CO2. Similarly, all the hydrogen in butyric acid went straight into forming the water. So we can think backwards. Based on how much CO2 was produced, that'll tell me how much carbon I started with in butyric acid. That'll also tell me how much hydrogen I started with in butyric acid. And then I can just uh, figure out how much is left over, and that should be the oxygen. All right. So let's, let's go to it. Let's start out with our CO2. Start with what you're given. 0.882 grams CO2. Now I need to convert, I need to find out how much carbon this is. So I need to cancel grams of CO2 with mole CO2. Because according to mole world, if if I'm at uh, if I'm at grams of something, the only place I can go is to moles of something. But when I'm at moles, I can go many places. I can find out how many atoms I have of whatever. Or I can find out um, how many moles of something else I have. Moles is a very versatile unit, but grams, I'm stuck. So I always have to go back to moles. So here I am, going to moles. And one mole of CO2, I have 44.01 grams CO2. Continuing, I need to cancel moles CO2 with something. Uh, or I'll cancel moles CO2. Gram CO2 canceled. From mole CO2, I want to go to moles carbon. Because remember, I'm using mole world. I switch between moles. I'm going to go to moles carbon. In one mole of CO2, I do have only one mole of carbon. And then I'm going to do one more step. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this conversion going. I'm going to say, uh, uh, no, actually, I'll punch it out here. So how many moles of carbon was that? That is... 0.0200 moles of carbon. Let's convert this to grams. In one mole of carbon, how many how many grams are there? 12.01 grams of carbon. Okay. Do this math. We find 0.2402 grams of carbon. Now why do we want grams? Because this is the, although this is the, the grams of carbon found in this many grams of CO2, that still means that this is this, the grams of carbon that started out in butyric acid. So now we know how much carbon started out in butyric acid. 
we're going to go through a similar process to uh, find the hydrogen. Let's start out with the amount of water that we have. 0 0.360 grams H2O. And now I'm going to go from grams of water to moles of water. In one mole of water, I have 18.02 grams H2O. And then I need to cancel grams H2O, then cancel moles of So for moles of H2O, let's go to moles of hydrogen. Essentially, that's what we're trying to get to. How much carbon, how much hydrogen, how much oxygen that I would do to your gas. For every one mole of H2O, I have two moles of hydrogen, given by the molecular formula. Okay, punching this out, we see 0 0.0400 moles of hydrogen. Let's get rid of mole world and this these calculations. Let's keep our results. All right. So I'm going to convert this these moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen because we we already have grams of carbon. Oopsies, I did, I erased the moles of carbon. I'm going to put those back up. We had 0 0.0200 moles of carbon, and we have this many grams of carbon. The moles will come into play whenever we're trying to determine the empirical formula. So right now, I, am, I need to convert the, the 0 0.04 moles of hydrogen into grams of hydrogen. So for every one mole of H, I have 1.008 grams of H. This math yields 0.043 grams of hydrogen. All right, so now we know how much hydrogen started out in the butyric acid. We know how many gr uh, grams of hydrogen and we know how many grams of carbon started out in the butyric acid. So the whole thing weighed 0 0.440 grams. But if we take out all the carbon, 0 0.2402 grams, and we take out all the hydrogen, which is 0 0.0403 grams, then that's just going to leave us with the, the grams of oxygen left in, uh, in the butyric acid. So this is going to come out to be 0 0.1595 grams of oxygen. All right. So let's take into account that we've now used all of our known quantities. So we are approaching the final answer. It's very close. I need, in order to, to, to determine the empirical formula for the compound, I need to figure out the mole to mole to mole ratio, the mole of oxygens to the mole of carbons to the mole of hydrogens. I'm actually done with these gram quantities, so let me erase them. I need to figure out how many moles of oxygen I have, because I need all this mole to mole to mole ratio. ratios. So grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. For every one mole of oxygen, I have 16.00 grams. This comes out to be 0 0.01 .00 moles of oxygen. Great, now I have all my mole quantities. And finally, in order, in order to determine what x, y, and alpha are, I, I figure out what the mole to mole to mole ratio is. So your professors have probably taught you to just take the lowest mole, divide it into the biggest ones. That's fine. We see that for every one oxygen, uh, for every one oxygen, I have two carbons. And for every one oxygen, I have uh, four hydrogens. So essentially, my 
empirical formula is C2H4O. Your empirical formula way works as well. And this is the empirical formula for butyric acid. Tasty, tasty stuff. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.